Hello there, uh, my name is Caroline Bevan and I've been asked to do a quick demonstration uh, via this screencast of uh, how I created this chart here. So a chart of online search which I used uh, data from Google Trends and then uh, used Tableau and Illustrator to create the chart. So we'll have a quick run through now of how I did that. If we then go first of all to Google Trends, uh, let's type in something something simple. Let's try, as you may have just seen there, let's try Pepsi and Coke as two values which we can assess how they've been searched online, searched for online since 2004. Um, the thing about Google Trends, it doesn't show the exact, the actual numbers of how many searches. It uh, shows a difference from the average. So it's kind of a, 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 a very theoretical figure, but it does show quite nicely how Pepsi and Coca-Cola have altered over the year. Obviously you can see Pepsi here very much on the forefront and then Coke here in the lead. So uh, if you've used Google Trends before it, it's quite a strange concept to get your head around it because it's not actual numbers. Um, and also I've, I, I looked very much into um, whichever one you have first because if you put Pepsi first and then Coke it compares Coke to Pepsi um, in terms of the search. But actually I've, I've tried it the other way around and the chart is, is not different. In any ways, and as we're not going to be using the numbers down the side, which is the element that does change, um, we just want the shape of the chart. Then, as it is, is fine by me. So what we do is we find the areas that we want. So we can change the region if we like, and we can change the year. But I'm just going to stick with uh, 2004 to 2011. So we scroll all the way down, and you can export page as CSV. Now the way I understand it, with uh, relative scaling, that takes the average of the whole time period and uses that as kind of your average starting point so then anything above and below that um, and fixed scaling is if you've just for example picked 2009 it would just take the average from that year so as we're using the whole lot relative scaling is fine for us here so let's export that data come on there we go so it's opened it up into excel which is a csv file um, now there's not there's a lot of this we don't actually need, so we don't need this at the top. This is just a standard blurb. These are the elements that we want. So we have got the Pepsi column, the values for Pepsi, and the values for Coke. So I can just delete these two columns here. These are of uh, no interest to us. And I'm just going to select all the data I want. Now the next stage you can do one of two ways. You can either save this as a a spreadsheet, a separate spreadsheet, and then import that into uh, the Dex Pro we're going to use, which is Tableau. I actually find it a lot quicker normally to uh, copy it, Control C, open up Tableau, which is a, a soft, um, a visualization software package. Um, I'm currently using the desktop version. There is a public version as well, which is free. Uh, but the, the only downside with that is that all data is then made public. So if you're using maybe sensitive data or something that's not ready for publication yet, then um, consider using maybe a different form of software. But I just pasted uh, Control V into the spreadsheet, and you can see there's all the dates, and there's a column for Coke, and there's a column for Pepsi. So what we want to do now is, is turn these into a chart that we can use. There's a whole different um, series of charts here. I just want to create two line charts. There we go, we have Coke and we have Pepsi. Let's just change the colours of those. And let's be, let's be pedantic. And let's make Coke red and Pepsi blue. So there you go, we have our two line charts now, which show the, uh, the rise and fall of searches for those two brands uh, from 2004. Now you may notice that at the moment they're not uh, quite comparable because there's a different scale. It's fairly close because of these two brands, but if we were comparing something different, maybe Dr. Pepper's to Coke, they would be vastly different. So what you want to do is make sure that the scales are both the same. So that uh, Coke has the biggest scale, so what we're going to try and do is change the Pepsi scale to match the Coke one. So you can see here that, uh, let's just make them all to, not to three. Edit axis, fixed, not to three. Now what we can do, you see Pepsi dropped slightly there, what we can do now is overlay those charts and they will be on the same scale. We now need to export these two charts from Tableau 
into a graphics package so you can export various images but I always find it easier to print to PDF various sizes of paper I always say unspecified you never know quite know how big the chart's going to come out the other end and we'll just call it Pepsi V Coke ok we go into our uh, graphics package I use Adobe Illustrator Pepsi V Coke open the PDF we've just saved it always says the font's missing it's not a problem we're going to delete most of the fonts anyway so here we have our PDF, the PDF we've just printed off from Tableau. At the moment it's all set into various elements and it's very difficult to uh, see where they all are. So I'd just like to free the whole lot up. So I press Control, Alt and 7. Sorry, Control A to select all of it. And then Control, Alt, 7. Keep pressing 7 and it will turn the whole of the... PDF into separate elements that you can then delete, move around with, play with as you see fit. So we can just delete a lot of the uh, extraneous data that we don't need. Let's get rid of let's get rid of the word weak from there. It's also you also find a lot of white bits, which you really get in the way when you're trying to move things around. So I just tend to go through and delete a lot of these. Now I do want to leave the lines in because I'm going to make sure that the charts are both in the same place. So what we have here is uh, now two line charts. So we want to turn, if you remember back from the original graphic, into solid sort of mountain charts. So let's go back to, where are we? Let's go back to Illustrator. Let's zoom in a little bit. What we want to do now is turn this red line chart into a solid a solid graphic so we just need to draw a line. Let's use the dropper tool to make the line match. We also then draw the line at the other end. Like so. Zoom back out again and we just need to join those two lines up. And with Illustrator it's quite easy because it tells you when you're going right or wrong. It's very difficult to get it's a little bit crooked, but for the purposes of demonstration it's fine. So what we want to do now is select all the different elements. So make sure you've got both end lines, the bottom line and the top. Right click and join. So what we have now, in theory, is one big shape. Yeah, there we go. And make sure it always stays back in position. At the moment then we have one shape which has a red outline, but is transparent in the middle as you can see by this crossed out line here. So what we want to do is make it transparent on the outside and solid on the middle. And there's a very simple button for that on Illustrator which is just reverse. And there we go. So what we can also what we can do now is quickly just do the same for the blue one. Although I'm sure by now you've worked out what I'm going to do. Excuse the very, very rough lines there. Let's make those lines a bit thicker. There we go. Quickly do that. Excuse the chunky lines. There we go. And again, don't forget, you need to select all the lines. Right click and join. Reverse your colours. And there we go. Now we need to make, if we just flip back to the original chart, that kind of 3D effect, which is very very simple process. Take your top chart, move it down so it overlays the bottom one. And I think due to my lopsided lines they're not exactly going to overlay each other but there we go. Um, decide which one you want to have at the front. I've decided I'm going to have the blue one at the front but you can change the, um, the order of these things by right clicking and arranging them to front or centre back. So let's have Let's send red to the back. What we also want to do is create. The, we want to create this 3D effect here. So if we go back to Illustrator, and this is very simple. Select the uh, piece that's going to be at the back, and simply just press the up arrow uh, a standard number of times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then across the same one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. 
you have your two rails now. I think for something like this it would probably need to be. But you can obviously make those match up. The reason that I have I always pick a, an easy to remember number is if I have more than one layer, then it's kind of good to have uh, them all the same. Simply draw a line that clips the corner of all your images. Be a little bit more precise than that if you want. Um, and there we go. 3D chart based on Google um, Trends data. And because, as I said, the, the data is actually very tenuous, you can delete the data itself. The data doesn't actually mean anything, it's more just a, in relation to. And then you can very easily see where the peaks and troughs are of uh, Google, of um, Pepsi and Coke over time. And uh, I hope that was helpful to you. And you can now see, kind of, how I made this chart here. Um, so yes, I hope that was helpful.